Behind me is Greeter Falls, and it's a part of this big network of trails here in South Cumberland State Park. And this is a nose for life. I told you I'd fix it. So, do you ever get sidetracked? Yeah, you know what I mean, everything's going great, and then suddenly you're sidetracked. Maybe a little bit of drama bumped you off of your way, or maybe something serious happened and it bumped you off the path that you were on. Yeah, that happens to me a lot. Now, to some extent, everybody's like this a little bit. I mean, it doesn't take much really to get people off of that goal. Maybe it was to write a book. You know, if you write one page every single day for a year, you have a 300 and 40, 30. You have a big book. But listen, don't be discouraged. One of the best things that can help you stay on track is when you have great friends and great family who remind you, hey, you have this goal, you have this dream, stay on target. And I'm thankful for friends of mine who love me enough to say, hey, what's going on? Where are your videos? Well, here they are, and it's good to be back. It's good to be back on track, and today we are going to have an amazing time because I'm going to take you to a park here in southeastern Tennessee that nobody knows about. Okay, maybe a handful of people know about, but not many, and it's pretty cool. Fall is time for high school football. But you know, fall is coming to the Tennessee Valley, but you would know that for the weather. I mean, it's still pretty hot. I mean, it's cooled down a little bit, which for us, that means, ooh, we're in the low 80s now and in the 50s at night. But around here, that means fall is coming. Now the leaves, well, they're changing a little, but not a lot. They're still pretty green, and there's still a lot of bugs. But I'll tell you something, it's better than the week before last. And quite honestly, another one of the reasons why we've not had a video lately, it's just been too hot up until this week. But I think you're gonna enjoy this video a whole lot, especially if you like hiking. You know, if you watch this channel a lot, you know that we do a lot of hiking. And we found a place here in southeastern Tennessee around the Cumberland Plateau that is absolutely perfect for hiking. All right, do you see the power line right here? Do you see it going to the tree? I'm just saying, is, is that dangerous? I mean, I'm in, in the middle of the woods here in Hamilton County, and it's like a power line is like almost to my head. I'm just, I'm just saying, it looks dangerous. When I was a kid, they'd be like, don't play around that. It's been here for like six months. I don't know what it is. Crazy. Now, it's funny because most people I know, if you ask them what their favorite time of the year is, they're going to tell you the fall, especially if you live here in the south. Now, that may be the case outside of our region as well. Come to think of it, I don't know of too many people that, that don't just love the fall season. Maybe a handful of weirdos. I don't know. But fall season is beautiful. First of all, here in the south, it finally cools down a little bit. And you can actually go back, back outside without dying of a heat stroke. But it's also the foliage, the beautiful colors. Now, they've not been as beautiful in the past few years because of drought situations and whatnot. But they're expecting a little bit more color this year. And of course, here in southeastern Tennessee, it's not really time for everything to pop out. But from everything I'm hearing, this is supposed to be the year that we have some of the prettiest colors. Now, a buddy of mine, Nathan Gilbert, he always said that the fall colors look like a big bowl of tricks. And I always love that comparison because when the fall colors really bust out, that's exactly what they look like, a big bowl of tricks. But if there's ever a time that I would challenge you and you know the viewer and to encourage other people to get out and hike and be a part of nature, it's this year. Like I said earlier, we are bombarded with news right now, horrible news. And because of the algorithm on YouTube, it's better that I just leave it at that. Everywhere you look, every time you turn the channel, something horrific is taking place. Why that's happening is for a different kind of channel. If you sit inside full of dread and fear and worry, or if you do what I did for about three days and just sit and argue on Facebook, it doesn't do any good. It really doesn't. It might make you feel better, but in the long run, it's not gonna help you overall. It really isn't. So what I wanna encourage you to do in this season, in which it seems like we get bad news every single day, is to get outside and get the cardio up. Pack the, pack the lunch, you know, the I always love almonds. You know, pack the almonds, the water, and get out in nature. Spend some time in prayer. I know for me, praying is the number one way to ward off all the negativity. You know, I sit down with the creator of the universe. You know, I'm a Christian, so I believe in Jesus Christ and just sit down with the creator of the universe and talk. Get all that stuff out and lay it at his feet. That's what works for me. And then coming out in nature and appreciating what's been created just for you. And that will help alleviate all this negativity and stress and worry. And then suddenly some things that we would typically argue about or fuss about, it just goes away. Because what's important 
is all around us. And these days, there's really no excuse not to get out because there are trails and parks everywhere. I tried to look on a map to find out places in America that this channel may not be effective at all because maybe there's not access to a park or any type of facility where somebody could get out in nature. And that's just not true. There are places everywhere where you can get out, get out and walk. Now, it's going to require some effort, but if you're willing to put forth the effort, nature's out there for you to be involved in it. So regardless of where you live, take advantage of getting out and enjoying this beautiful time. Okay, check this out. Discovering South Cumberland State Park and the Savage Gulf Recreation Area was a complete accident. Carolyn and I were out for a Sunday drive after church. Yes, you heard me right, a Sunday drive after church. It sounds old-fashioned, and I, I guess it is. But we love driving around the country on a beautiful afternoon. Highway 111, just outside Dunlap, Tennessee, turns into Highway 8. And if you're heading west, you'll see a sign. The road number at that location is 399. So we were curious when we saw the sign, and we headed towards this very interesting Tennessee State Park. Seriously, I I'm not a Tennessee State Park expert. I mean, I've been to quite a few Tennessee State Parks, but I've never heard of this pretty amazing park, and this park is all about hiking. In my opinion, Tennessee State Parks have improved a lot over the past 30 years. Recently, South Cumberland State Park was the recipient of a grant provided by the Recreation Trails Program. So there's been a lot of work done in this particular state park recently to enhance your hiking experience. In fact, there's over 25,000 acres set aside for hiking and camping, and some people think it's the best backpacking and primitive camping in the region. South Cumberland State Park isn't just one park, it's actually 10 parks under the name South Cumberland State Park, making it the largest wilderness state park in in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> Seriously, I've never heard of this place until recently and now I know why. As far as the state park's concerned, it's relatively new and there's a great story behind that, but that's for later. The park is located within four different Tennessee counties, Grundy, Franklin, Marion, and Sequatchie County. If you know anything about this part of Tennessee, these counties are some of the most scenic counties in the region. It's interesting to note that the park actually spills over into the Mont Eagle area. And if you've ever crossed Mont Eagle Mountain on I-24, you know how breathtaking that scene really is. South Cumberland State Park is so diverse that even Backpacker Magazine listed as one of the greatest trails and they've even included it in their top 25. Who knew? Now there's a lot more to this park than we can even begin to cover in one video, but as always I've placed a lot of links in the description. For the rest of this video, you're going to hear me talk about several places and you'll see a variety of signs, but remember, all of these places are a part of South Cumberland State Park. You're seeing this video in one sitting, but it actually took me three visits to understand how large this relatively new state park is. It's pretty impressive. It's so impressive that Carolyn and I are going back tomorrow when I intend on releasing this video. That's why this video is called Part 1, because we really think there's more to show in a second video about South Cumberland State Park. It's that amazing. See, there are access points around Middle Southern Tennessee, and each access point is unique and really interesting. And in case you're wondering, all of these access points are connected by trails within the wilderness area. Carolyn and I have tackled a few already, and yes, it's awesome enough for a fourth visit. If you're into backcountry hiking, regardless as to where you live, South Cumberland Park should be on your bucket list. So the Savage Gulf State Natural Area is a great place to bring your family for a pretty easy hike. I mean, one of the hikes is about 1.5 miles in, 1.5 miles out, but it is a great hiking area. You can walk to a, a couple of swinging bridges, and also there's some great places to kind of get out in the creek and swim around. It's a really cool place. Now, Savage Gulf, a part of the South Cumberland State Park System, was set aside in 1980, according to this marker, as a way to preserve this area for generations to come to enjoy its amazing hiking, amazing access to some of the most beautiful scenery in this part of the country. Here at the beginning of the Savage Gulf Trail System, there is a bathroom here for men and women. It's a running water bathroom, so it's kind of nice when you're going onto the trail or coming off the trail. Again, these trails, are they vary. I mean, there's some of the trails that are quite long. Uh, one of them is 12.5 miles. One of them's a nice 1.5 mile loop. It's 1.5 miles there to these uh, series of waterfalls and then 1.5 miles back. When Carolyn and I started our adventure last weekend, we started here at the Savage Gulf Recreation Area and we had a, an amazing time walking down this trail, but we weren't filming, we were just spending time together. Today, now that we know so much more about the South Cumberland State Park, we're trying to find alternate entrances. So we're not actually gonna do the trail today, or at least not right now. We may come back to it and film some later. But right now, what we're really wanting to do is head to some other entrance points and see 
how vast this thing is. I know according to the website that I've even shown here so far, this thing is huge. So as for wildlife, you are liable to see anything here uh, in this area. You will you can see deer, of course. Now, one of the reports that I read online was that deer uh, are kind of a threat right now. In other words, there's, there's too many deer. I don't really understand that one. If you have any information of how deer can be a threat to a wildlife wilderness, please put that in the description below. I didn't see too much about coyotes. I did see that uh, in Sequatchie County, of course, the bear population is on its way back, which is a good thing, but there are, uh, if, when you come here, there's a variety of wildlife that you can see. It's pretty amazing. Now here at the ranger station, I know the first day, last Sunday afternoon when Carol and I were here, the ranger was in and the office door was open and he was fielding questions and whatnot. Now the past couple of times I've been here to kind of recon the area to get some information for this video, the ranger hasn't been in, so I'm sure that they keep some kind of hours. Those hours aren't actually posted here at the Savage Gulf Rec Recreation Area, which again is on 399 off of the 111 Highway 8 on Cagle Mount. So I'm gonna put up a map right now and I'm gonna show you where that is like in relationship to Chattanooga. And if you'll notice, it's north of Chattanooga on 27. Then you turn uh, onto 111. 111 turns past Dunlap, will turn into Highway 8. Then you turn left off of 111 Highway 8 onto 399. And then you just follow the signs and look for the Savage Gulf Recreation Area, which is a part of South Cumberland State Park. So check this out. If you're camping here, apparently there's Wi-Fi. So even Wi-Fi has made its way into the wilderness. So much for a wilderness. You know, a part of the classification for being a wilderness is it shouldn't have Wi-Fi. I'm just saying, doesn't that make it like less of a wilderness if you can order pizza there I'm just saying so a lot of people in our region down here in the southern middle part of Tennessee they're not even aware that this huge hiking park and camping area is popping up everywhere it was essentially what Carol and I are doing we're driving a big circle around the wilderness area looking at all the different access points remember the South Cumberland State Park is actually ten different parks combined into one giant park and it's really cool because there are several entrances all along the way right now we're about to cross the intersection 56 uh, and it's pretty cool we're still in Grundy County but when we turn down here on 56 we should see even more entrances to the Cumberland State Park and I'm telling you this thing's gonna be huge it's gaining momentum every time we stop at a certain place to uh, see a different access point there are several hikers coming in and going out uh, different campers so I'm telling you this is gonna be a pretty interesting place over the next 20 years here in the Tennessee Valley but on a sidebar we're not actually in the Tennessee Valley any longer we're actually on the westernmost western part of the Tennessee Valley so technically we're not in the Tennessee Valley right now just a side note so now we're here at Altamont and again we're making a big circle around the South Cumberland State Park Altamont is a beautiful beautiful Tennessee town it's a small town it's uh, just a regular beautiful town in America a real Americana but if you'll notice here the sign Stone Door Greeter Falls and of course Savage Gulf going back the other way and again we're continuing our circle around South Cumberland State Park and we're making a pretty big circle we're on Highway 56 or Highway 108 if you're keeping up with us on the map and again I'm telling you this is going to be huge in the Tennessee the South Tennessee area uh, even northern Alabama over the next 20 years. Probably a couple of hundred feet below me is a beautiful sounding creek slash river here. It's absolutely beautiful. Now this is kind of an area where one step may be your last. I mean, it's that kind of a fall. And there's a cliff right here that just goes straight down, but it's absolutely beautiful. As usual, the camera is never gonna do this justice, but what really stands out here are the sandstone cliffs. They are absolutely beautiful. As Carol and I were walking this trail today, what we started realizing is that we know very little about this area and what's going on. So we have to do a lot more research because this thing is gonna end up being huge. You've heard, heard me say this several times. This is going to be kind of a, a, a go-to place over the next 20 years. You have people from Nashville, Tennessee that are gonna be coming to this area to do some hiking because you're 20 miles from McMinnville, Tennessee, which is just down the road from Nashville. And of course, people from my neck of woods around Chattanooga and that area, of course, Alabama and Georgia. This is gonna be a primo place. I mean, it's a wilderness. It's the largest wilderness state park in the state of Tennessee. It's gonna be really amazing. And they're still working on it, still expanding it. There's all these rock walls here on this trail as well. These beautiful rock walls that you're kind of hugging as you're going around this uh, ravine. It's very beautiful. Notice these rock 
ledges uh, behind me, these rock walls. And they actually keep going around this bend right here, and this is absolutely beautiful. It reminds me of the Cumberland Plateau over on the Kentucky side. I actually made a video about that, oh, I wanna say at the beginning of the summer. You can actually watch that video about the Cumberland Falls area in Kentucky by clicking right here, I think. So this is where we started the intro here at Greeter Falls at South Cumberland State Park. And if you look at that pool down there, I'm just saying, unless there's a sign posted, I'm so in that water, you have no idea. If you watch A Nose for Life a lot, you know I'm always telling you to get out and find the amazing places right outside your door. And this is a great example. This is 25,000 acres of State Park with beautiful, this is just one of dozens, if not more than dozens of examples of beautiful places, beautiful, pristine, clean water, gorgeous overlooks that's less than 45 minutes from my house that I didn't know existed until recently. On a Sunday afternoon drive, we saw a sign and look, look at how beautiful this is. And there's one other friendly couple here. They left a little while ago. They were very friendly and nice, had their family dog down here, having a great time. And if you live in this area, this is a great place to come. There's no news here. You're not gonna be bombarded with information. I don't even think there's cell signal here, thank goodness. But this is a beautiful area, and regardless of where you live, I promise you there are interesting places, phenomenal places to get away from it all. And be that person that seeks out life and living, and this is living.